St. Mary's Knights basketball, and we are SM Hoops YouTube Live. First game of 2023 for the St. Mary's Knights coming in at 5-9 and nine after a couple really tough uh, tournaments out of state, one in Nevada, the Tarkanian Classic, and then one uh, out in California, the Classic at Damien. Alongside Chris Ferrandorf, I'm Alex Coyle. When you look at the record for St. Mary's, it doesn't really tell the entire story. Uh, again, the tough talent that they went up against and still coming away with a couple of uh, wins, including the last game in that uh, classic at the Damien against Long Beach Pollock. Yeah, we've said this numerous times, Alex, but it's tournaments like that out-of-state games like the Knights have been playing that prepare St. Mary's for the long postseason stretches that they've been had that they've been known to have, excuse me, in the past couple of years. Well, tonight it's uh, Flagstaff that comes in, the Flagstaff Eagles, coached by Nick Walton. Um, coming in at 2-11. and 11. Uh, One of their wins, though, a 73-68 two-overtime win against Saguaro. We'll get the starting lineups here and be back for tip-off. Thank you. 
There's the five for each team. Now it's time for basketball. St. Mary's going to wear their home whites. Flagstaff in the road blacks with the green lettering and numbering. And Chris, for the first time in 2023, basketball at Bull Gymnasium. A really happy sight for St. Mary's to get back home and get back to some winning ways here in Arizona competition. Oh, for sure. And a lot has happened since that last Milton game that we were able to broadcast for all, the, all of our viewers that tune into the We Are SM Hoops broadcast. Knights win the tip, Styles Phipps, who had a tremendous couple of tournaments, even though getting double teamed for the most of the time. Out there in California and in Las Vegas. Now it's Kenny White finds P.J. Lewis on the left wing. We saw a lot of 2-3 in the JV game for Flagstaff, out running that same thing here to start the varsity matchup. 11 on the shot clock, Styles Phipps along three from the left wing, and it's pure. Still find a way to leave him open, he's gonna hit that. Now Flagstaff with the basketball, the possession for their first time as Janicek misses his first jumper, but the offensive rebound to Angel Guerrero. Now on the right wing, O'Brien Pubini gets his own miss, tipped around a couple of times. Frisch, top of the key, guarded by P.J. Lewis. 18 on the shot clock. Guerrero back up top, guarded by Kenny White. He gets a screen, he'll float one into the corner for Frisch, guarded by P.J. Lewis. Back up top, this is Hughes. Straight away for a three, that time it's Janicek, but another offensive rebound. The possession continues before it's stolen away by Phipps. Knights have numbers if they want them. Tambora to the corner, Kenny White for three. That hits back iron, no good, but they get their own miss. Styles Phipps thought about his shot. He'll recycle the offense. Fresh 30 for St. Mary's. Minute and a half into this game, just still just the third possession of the ball game. Styles, fade away, three, it's good. Two for two from long range for Styles. it's six nothing. And if you're Flagstaff, you might want to reconsider that two, three zone fairly early here. Most of the teams in the Tarkanian Classic and the Classic at Damien were, like we mentioned, double teaming Styles Phipps and that really worked to their advantage. And a sec into the lane, no good, fight for the rebound. That'll be Kenny White. Out to Styles Phipps, spin around, left hand lay in, it's good. First eight for Styles and a timeout for Nick Walton. Probably a wisely used timeout there from the Flagstaff head coach. So Flagstaff comes into this game on easy preps, one and five, max preps, including tournaments, two and 11. So they're gonna wanna use an early timeout to try to you know, regain their footing before this game gets too out of hand. Yeah, 2-11, and 11, we, we mentioned it in the open, a 73-68 uh, game against Saguaro that, that went to two overtimes, one of their victories. But uh, a couple other teams in the St. Mary's uh, region this season, Mesquite, 106-42 loss for Flagstaff, and then at Seton to start the season, a 65-57 loss for the Eagles. So some competition to... And whatever this final score is, you can really measure up against the rest of the St. Mary's region that they'll start and continue to play next week. 8 nothing Knights out of the timeout. They pick up that full court pressure. O'Brien Pubeni with the basketball. Too often than not as well, Alex. I mean, you like to see a hot start from Styles Phipps, but you also like to see some of his teammates get involved as well because versus the top-notch competition like Perry, who St. Mary's will be playing on Saturday, it's gonna be necessary. Solid defense on the back cut by P.J. Lewis, but a, just a better finish. I believe that's Robert Saxton with the bucket. Actually, no, that'll be Frisch. As there's a three from Kenny White, so quick, didn't see it. Goes through, it's 11-2. Back to that full court pressure, they'll trap. Losing the basketball is O'Brien Pubeni. He finds a helper that's used. Picked off, Styles. Right hand layup this time, little finger roll action. He's got a quick 10. How nice is it to have Kenny White back in the lineup for this St. Mary's Knights team? You can just tell the presence is felt. As that pass is gonna go out of bounds. 
All Knights to start this basketball game as Jake Sentner will check in. And interestingly enough, Chris, he's listed as their leading scorer. 20 points per game, a 33% three-point shooter. And he comes in for Luke Hughes, who played two quarters of JV basketball earlier today. I thought I recognized him. Plays physical out there. He definitely does. Styles playing off the ball. He gets it into the corner. He's going to drive baseline, and he's met by three Eagles defenders. And first touch for Sentner in the basketball game. Takes on three Knights, picks up his dribble, and breaks the press. Almost halfway through the first quarter, Knights by 11. Eagles in the half court. Haven't had a lot of clean looks. Just the one backdoor cut layup. That's gone in. Ball to shoot now. O'Brien Pubini. Long arcing three, no good. Rebound to Tambora. Look to get Sadu some action here. Some fresh cornrows. Good ball movement. Maciel in the corner of three. That one's a little bit long. B.J. Lewis could have gone up himself. Instead, tries to get it to Kenny White. That's no good. Yeah, not sure he was expecting that pass there, but Sadu Tambora trying a new look for 2023. But he finished off a, a game versus another region opponent, Marcos Tuniza, at the Suns Arena with probably 25 points. Fade away, step back, Styles, no good. Masiel the rebound straight away. P.J. Lewis for three. That one hits back iron. Masiel playing with some effort here. As he and Tambora will try to trap in the middle of the floor. A little bit of a lull in this ball, ball game. Got Ferendorf getting ready to check in. As the Eagles get it into the corner, one dribble, pick it up. That's Jerome Key. O'Brien Pubini. He averages 15 a game. He can't find it. Now Styles going to push. 3-10 left in the first quarter, and he'll finger roll it in again. He's got 12 of the night's 15. It's just tough. It's just tough to stop him in the open court, Alex. When he gets going downhill, whether it's a spin move or a euro step, you really, you really never know as a defender what he's going to do. Angel Guerrero, dribble handoff now finds Key. O'Brien Pubeni, fade away, long range. That one's good, just inside the three-point line. It's 15-4. Knights pushing it up the floor. Lewis into the corner, back out to Styles. They're reset, 25 to shoot on the shot clock. Lewis in the corner for three. That one will rattle home. Then as Styles fips 12, a three from Kenny and a three from PJ, the scoring so far. Yeah, when this St. Mary's team is hidden from deep, they're going to be tough to stop. Three point attempt for the Eagles, way long. O'Brien Pubeni gets the rebound, and his putback can't go. Three on four, good dribble move makes it three on three. Lewis, another three from the other corner. That one splashed home. 21 4, and another timeout for Walton. Just what the doctor ordered, Alex. And this St. Mary's team throughout the entirety of this season, they've been relying on Styles Phipps extremely heavily. But when you have guys like P.J. Lewis and Kenny White knocking down threes, spacing the floor, forcing a team like Flagstaff to not devote 100% of their attention to one guy on the floor, it, you know, it, just, spaces, it, it just opens everything up. I think that's the right point that you make. It, it opens up the driving lanes for Styles because then he can either drive and kick or he can drive and finish. And we know he can finish among two, even three guys in the lane, but uh, him finishing up against one, it's almost automatic. And we've seen that so far. And then dishing it out, three shots made by guys not named Styles Phipps, all threes. Well, and when it, when they open up the lanes, that also opens it up for Sadu Tambora, the big man. Yep. You know, sometimes it's tough for him to work inside when. There are three guys packing the paint on him and Styles. John Ferrandorf will check in for Maciel. They'll pick up in that full court pressure. 17 point game, still just under two minutes left. Is Ferrandorf gonna get a steal? Nope, can't corral it. He dives into the scorer's table and gets off. 23 seconds on the shot clock and a layup. That's Jake Sentner, his first two. Styles Phipps in and out dribble in the lane. Tries to finish amongst three, but it gets the shot blocked by Janicek. Phipps to inbound looking for Ferrendorf. Miscommunication, but it's off an eagle.
John Ferrandorf, a guy that had a pretty big game in one of the Tarrant Classic games. What was it, 26 points? 28 points Oyster, and 28. eight threes. Um, yeah, and then two games back-to-backs, he hit 14, 14 total threes. And if he can just con consistently provide that, it's... Just another element to open up that floor. Yeah. Eagles will slow it down. Ferrandorf another tip, just can't corral. Now into the lane, a good foul by P, uh, excuse me, Kenny White. The first foul of the game comes with 104 left in the first quarter. And uh, Chris, everybody knows what we think about the officials, and it's better for them to not blow the whistle like that. You know, I'm going to agree with you there, Alex. But especially the, the, the JV game before us. Here's the thing, though. We, <laughs> you're. <laughs> You're out here commenting on the very first foul of the game. They didn't call in for the first seven minutes. That's, no, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm okay, saying okay. They, they, they should keep oh, time, keep spacing the time oh. between the fouls. Well, being how called. about in that JV game? They called about oh. nine fouls in the first three minutes of the game. Double bonus. Add me yelling from, the, from <laughs> up here in the booth. Double bonus entering the second quarter for Flagstaff. 21 seven minute, four to go. Styles into the corner, he'll drive baseline. And that's what we were just talking about. The ability to finish with two guys, even getting hacked. He's strong enough to, to finish there and one more. Well, in Flagstaff, they don't have a guy that's, you know, a big, a, a true big man, if you will. Styles Phipps is used to playing against guys who are 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", anchoring the defense. And when he's got guys who are 6'4", 6'5", it's almost like too easy. His free throw is no good. Maybe the one area where he's had a bit of struggle so far this season. Dubeni finds a man open in the corner. That one's not going to go down. Rebound to Ferrandor. Knights look to push. White for three. That one splashes home. It's 26 to 7. 40 seconds to go. Long outlet pass. A couple of dribbles. A lot of steps. And a floater is good. As that's Janicek. You do have to know, Richard Garcia, their, their leader in blocks per game at 1.3 and leader in rebounds, 8.8 .8 for Flagstaff. He's wearing pajama pants over there on the bench, so it doesn't look like he's going to get any playing time tonight. I'm always a bit confused on the fashion sense there, but as long as he's comfy, that's all that matters, right? I wonder if he got those matching family uh, for Christmas. There's a corner three for Ferrandorf, and it's starting to rain from beyond the arc. Three seconds to shoot. Styles will get the rebound. Heave with one second. No good. But the Knights up by 20 and hold their opponent in single digits after eight minutes. Yeah, how about that for a quarter, Alex? Do you think those out-of-state games are playing off or, or what? Because St. Mary's, they haven't played much Arizona comp this year. And the ones they have played are some of the top teams in Brophy and, and Notre Dame. But, man, if you can get a game like this out the way versus Flagstaff regain some confidence especially heading into that Perry game on Saturday. You're just ramping that competition right back up. Yeah. Well, Perry is ranked number 12 um, in the nation by Max Preps. That <laughs> and the main factor to that is they've got two five stars, sophomore Koa Pete and a uh, senior Cody Williams. He's come into Colorado. So uh, <laughs> both those guys, Alex, about 6'9". It's going to be tough to stop. And it's going to be a fun one to watch. We'll, we'll have that one right here for you on We Are SM Hoops YouTube Live. Dominic Stern will be sitting in my seat for that one. I'll be uh, just up the road in Tempe doing some hockey. I know he's Instead, got unfortunately, to, you know. He, he's got a lot to live up to um, fo following in uh, the only other replacement's footsteps, Andrew Ferrandorf. If you I, I was going to ask Andrew if he was going <laughs> to be here on Saturday because I totally I didn't know he was still here. No, he's gone. He'll be gone. Yeah. Otherwise, you already know that call would be electric. <laughs> You'll have to remind me who played in that game. But I remember watching it. St. Mary's versus Post and Butte. Oh, that's right. White has that one tipped out of bounds. Maybe we'll have a Shamalama Ding Dong yeah. <laughs> coming out later in this game. Going to have to talk about something. <laughs> Trying to get Styles open a couple of screens. Good ball handling there to find the man open in the corner. A.J. Mundumba, his first action of the game. That one's no good, a little out of control on the layup. 
There's a layup on the other end. That had no chance, and the Knights look to push. First action for Ethan Laffing. There's a three, back iron no good. Ferrendorf has it tipped by Mundumba, but they're gonna say it stays here. Wow. I'm not so sure about that, but a little teammate on teammate crime there, and Knights get the call. Two Knights fighting for the ball. Guess we'll take it though. Kenny White almost not ready for the basketball on the inbound, Maciel. Back to Kenny. He'll drive, he'll find to the corner. One more pass, Styles wide open from the Knight logo. Back iron, no. Right for that board, all the way back out to Styles. Splits a couple, evades the charge and lays it in. That's an unbelievable play by number one in white. How about the body control, Alex? That's, you do yep. not see that in high school very often. And the fadeaway jumper, barely touched iron, but the rebound and put back. For Ethan Laughing is good. He's their assist leader at 2.3 a game. Styles fades away. That one's short. Dipped around. That's effort play right there. Ferrendorf on the right wing. Fresh shot clock for the Knights. 31 to 11. It's fouled. They're going to call that one on the ground. The second foul on the Eagles this half. Both have been on Styles Phipps drives. I think he's feeling himself today, Alex. He's been feeling himself for quite a while because. Averaged in the mid-30s in the Classic at the Damien, despite again being double teamed for the most of it. In the lane now, double teamed there. That little floater no good, and a foul the other way on Anthony Masia. That's really the only thing, Alex, that has uh, deterred this Knights team at times is foul trouble. Sadu Tambora has done it a couple times. Kenny White once or twice. And wow, look we've Izzy got in the Nunez. game. Nunez. Our guy. He checks in for Kenny White. Good pass that time into the corner for a three. It's good. Janicek by way of Sentner. An assist for him. Ferrendorf on the left wing. Six minutes to go. Half one. Styles into the lane. Steps back out. Mundumba for three. Back iron. No. Nunez. A tip. He keeps it alive. Still alive. Styles and the foul. That's grit and staying with it by two of the smaller guys on the floor in white. Two guards keep it alive. Chance for a three-point play. Did we have a nickname for Izzy Nunez? No, I, we were going to say something when he hit a three, and I'm trying to remember what it was just in case. I think it ended in Cito. You remember? Oh, yes. I, I, I do remember that part of it. As that free throw is good, of course, referring to last year's team. Desplash Sito, I think is what it was. Cito, that's what it was. <laughs> Love to see him get on the scoreboard tonight. Doing a good job of guarding Angel Guerrero. Makes him kick it out. And that is a travel and a half. Halfway up I-17 on that one. You know, Alex, when you practice against guards like Styles Phipps and Kenny White every single day in practice. You, know, you got to guard them? Yeah. I think you'll figure it out. Styles, a little isolation ball, kicks out to Ferrendorf. Couple dribbles, back out to Nunez. I'll see how now. Rarely do you see this line up on the floor. Styles pulls up for three. Hits all net, but out of the rim. And how about the effort by Nunez? I mean, two plays on the offensive end. He hasn't looked to shoot, but he's done a nice job to keep the possession alive, maybe steal a couple possessions. Yeah, he's showing that he wants to be in this game. That's for sure. I believe he got a start in one of those tournament games. He did at the Classic at the Dam at the Classic at Damien. The only game Izzy Nunez started the St. Mary's Knights won one and three in that tournament. Of course, that was a win over Long Beach Poly. Must be some good luck. Maciel, right hand finish. First bucket for him. It's 36-14. Trying to reset the shot clock. They'll blow the whistle. Still said four seconds on it. Now it's back to 35 with five minutes to go in the second quarter. Guerrero looks to inbound, gets a pass back off that inbound and hits a three. Well, in this quarter, it's been fairly even. 
Styles back into the lane. Mundumba steals the pass out there, tries to reverse layup, no good. On fight for that rebound. Look at Izzy Nunez run. It's back in front of Guerrero, and there's a wide open look for three. That'll rattle out. Nunez with the board, at least his second since coming in. Styles into the lane, finishes amongst three with the finger roll. That's just a tough look. Finger roll, he, he doesn't go to it too often. He, he, you know, that might be because of the competition he's playing against is usually not allowing that to happen, but wow, it got Nizzi Nunez Nunez post in the post, defense, and it's made over him. Jerome Key, the senior, as that's a tough one on the inbound, but it luckily falls back to Styles Phipps. Ferendorf, open, left wing, three, good. He hit four threes in the JV game earlier. It's his first here in varsity action, 41-19. Lays it in with the right hand. Brian Pubini, 41-21. Ferendorf open again, can he find it again? Short, Nunez rebound, back out to Styles, Back to Ferendorf, another three, a little deeper this time, just short. There's one thing that I know, him being my brother, Alex, he will not pass open a wide open shot. Nor should he, especially the way he's been shooting the ball this season. In with O'Brien Pubeni, takes it to the rack, little tip on the shot, but it falls down, 41-23, three minutes to go. Crossover, has the defender fallen back, but it's a bit too strong for Styles. That's a good pass in the lane, and, but uh, travel wastes that one. Jerome K walks, pass from Angel Guerrero, and slew of subs, three for each team. The Knights got away with the one there. And Flagstaff, they're, they're playing with the Knights this quarter. They're running up and down with them, that's for sure, putting points on the board. St. Mary's 41. And their starting lineup back out there. Back screen for Maciel, he catches the pass. In deep for Tambora, defender falls down. If that's gonna be the situation all night, just feed it to him. And that's a nice play, a designed play for Sadu Tambora, something we haven't seen too often this season, is a designed post up for him. And when you have a guy of his size, his talent, and he's got a couple Division I offers as well, you have to get some plays in just like that, especially versus Arizona competition. Maciel can't stay in front on the baseline. Shaden Begay picks up that foul. In the corner, O'Brien Pubeni for three. That's good. 17 point game. Styles, he's hounded by Setner all the way up the sideline. Pulls up, reverse layup. That one's pretty. You're going to let him ride him the entire way down, Alex? He'll just shrug you off. I guarantee you, Flagstaff's not going to play anyone that athletic. And that's strong. Pubeni, another three. That Man, one's good. He looks good. Good, <laughs> good player, Pubeni. Is. He's got some good length as well. And at 41. Styles into the lane. He's hacked. I think they're going to get Shetner on the body. That'll be the fourth foul on the Eagles. And that'll send him to the line. Styles Phipps yet again. Styles Phipps at the high free throw line. Two shots. I also cash that one. Uh, Speaking of cash. I was gonna, just going to say, <laughs> Caspian Jones in, case, uh, in a walking boot at the moment on the bench. Yep, in case anyone's wondering where he has been recently. Fortunately, he got a uh, sprained ankle, high ankle sprain in that Tarkanian Classic in Las Vegas, and he's been out ever since for the Knights team. And that's another big option, especially to, as we were talking about earlier, space to the floor for Styles Phipps. O'Brien well, Pubeni foot on the line, no good anyway. Knights looking for 50 in this first half. Styles back to PJ Lewis, back to Styles in the corner. Nobody wants to put it up until Styles will drive and another reverse layup, 49 29. I mean, how many do we think he has right now, Alex? Well, earlier I was going to say at least plus, 20, right? but uh, I think that's 10 points ago. 
Spinorama in the lane, little underhand. Whistle gonna be blown, but a nice finish. Is that Ethan laughing? When if Flagstaff keeps this game close, could keep Styles Phipps in the game, and if he's continuing to score the way he he is, they're winning this quarter. Yeah, they're winning this quarter. Twenty-two twenty is Flagstaff. Wow. Kenny White behind the back. He'll try a left-hand layup. That's no good. That's his dominant hand, and he couldn't finish it. A little too strong. 49 seconds, Sentner tries a reverse layup. That's no good. Now we're gonna quickly move up the floor. Styles to Tambora, awkwardly back to Styles. Behind the back around the world and in with the left hand. Wow. That's pretty much all you can say about that. Highlight reel is on tonight for number one and one. Under 30 to go, shot clock is off. 51-31, each team with 22 points in this second quarter. Blackstaff gonna hold for that final shot. Connor O'Brien Pubini, the junior. Gonna try to keep PJ it under Lewis. 20. Seven seconds, wide open back door. Good dish in the lane, the floater's good. That's it by Luke Hughes. Styles Phipps, did he get it off? Doesn't matter. And Flagstaff, they do win the second quarter, but at the half, it's 51-33. Points, points, points in that second quarter, Chris. Well, yeah, if you're Flagstaff and you tell, you know, head coach Nick Walton at halftime you're going to be down 18 points. After I being mean, down 20 in the first quarter? Exactly. You might take that, especially versus the St. Mary's team that you know has been one of the premier teams across the state of Arizona the past couple of seasons. So Styles Phipps did quite a bit. The three-point shooting was on the mark. I believe four different players other than Styles were able to hit threes in that one. If you're Coach Lopez, though, you spoke about you know how happy you are if you're Coach Walton. If, if you're Coach Lopez, what do you want to see from your team out of the half? Well, if you're Coach Lopez, I think you're liking the offense. You're seeing Styles Phipps get pretty much anything he wants. You're seeing him dish to players who are converting their three-point attempts, but on defense, you might want to see them get back a little bit quicker, less transition buckets, and maybe pack the paint. Besides uh, O'Brien Pubeni, no one's really converted beyond the beyond the three-point line for the for the Flagstaff Eagles. So if I'm the Knights, I'm at least attempting to force Flagstaff into some tough threes. And, and again, you don't want to, you know blow this game out too much and, and read into it too much either. But Mesquite beat this same very team 106 to 42. Yeah. Flagstaff only needs nine more points to get to that 42 point mark. Exactly, so Mesquite was getting getting after it on defense, that's for sure. It looks like St. Mary's, if they want to, could probably reach close to around the same point total as Mesquite in that game. But yeah, the Knights are gonna have to set, step up their defense in this second half, that's for sure. A uh, lot, lot is happening on the floor. They're transitioning the, this one into uh, a cheer well, competition. Yeah, cheer competition, so I guess we'll uh, witness that. A lot of purple here, Chris. Some GCU cheerleaders have come out. We'll yeah, see Grand what it's Canyon about. Cheer team. We'll figure it out together. I guess back, so. Back in 10 minutes <laughs> for the second half.
Fresh out of the half, some uh, significant halftime entertainment, Chris. Uh, GCU Lopes came out. They did their thing. Go Lopes. Go Lopes. <laughs> GCU, one of the best basketball atmospheres in the state yeah, of Arizona. Yeah, for sure. There's no disputing that. No. Head coach Bryce Drew, you know where he's from, Chris? Valparaiso uh, High School alumni, I believe. Yeah. Wow. I wonder where that is. Nice start with the basketball. Got to be in Chicago. <laughs> Styles Phipps, P.J. Lewis in the corner for a three. That'll rattle out. And St. Mary's leads by 18 here in this second half. And chucks up a three, and that one somehow falls. Janicek makes it a 15-point game. This is definitely not over yet, that's for sure, especially after the way it looked in that first quarter. Styles misses a three. Brian Pubeni, long arcing three. That's an air ball, but a rebound offensively. Two of them. Someone's got to find a body and box out down there. Ain't away. That's no good. Sentner couldn't hit. And the Knights survive three chances of the Eagles. Styles kicks out to the corner. Lewis looking for a three again off the side of the backboard. No one wants to score in the first minute of the second half. Kenny White, back guy are no good. Rebound, scrummed for, guy falls down and it's a jump ball. It'll be Flagstaff basketball. And I understand like a heat check maybe if your style fips, but the first possession of the half, it's definitely a tough shot to make, especially when GCU's cheer team ate up into your halftime routine. Uh, and they extended the halftime as well. Clock didn't start until they started their routine, the 10 minutes, Styles. Quick on the rebound, and the other way, tries to finish, stops, pops among three, Eagles no good, and an open Kenny White in the corner. Here comes Sentner down the other way. That's no good, but another fight for the board. That time it goes to Frisch, a jump ball, Knights basketball. And Chris, what was hot shooting and tremendous shooting in that first half for St. Mary's has gone ice cold out of the locker room. Yeah, Kenny White with a miss, P.J. Lewis with a bad one as well, and they were two of the guys who Styles Phipps could count on in that first half. Styles runs into a brick wall that is Jake Sentner. Again, he's the leader in points per game. Did not start the game, but came in off the bench, did start this half. He averages 20 a game. Styles splits a couple, finishes over another with the left hand laying off the backboard. First points for the night to the half. 17 point game, six minutes to go. And coming out of halftime, Flagstaff was really forcing Styles into jump shots, at least on the couple first couple of possessions. Even on the fast break, they made him pull up, but can't let him get going downhill if you're the Eagles. Little floater in the lane for Sentner can't fall. Both teams struggling to shoot this half. There's a three that'll rattle out for PJ or excuse me, Kenny White. Trickling into the corner, a bit long for Janicek. Offensive rebound and in. Sentner, second chance points and second chance opportunity. No, they're going to call that one on the floor, so no and one. That would have been a big play. Wow. But the first foul on St. Mary's, but again, it's rebounds, especially offensively for the Eagles. Yeah, that's been a problem all season for the Knights, and especially with Caspian Jones out, another 6-6, six, 6-7 six, six, forward for the Knights. They're really going to have to take a team effort to get it done. Center driving in the lane again. He can't finish. No foul call either. Now P.J. Lewis looks to push. Styles Phipps will trail as actually that's Kenny White. Styles in the corner on the left wing. A couple of drives in and out. Gets defenders falling each way. Straight away three. That's in rhythm. That's within the offense. A good look. And he hits. When Styles is driving in and then kicking out. That's another aspect of this Knights team that can work on offense. Not as much ISO one-on-one -on -one dribbling. Blackstaff trying to swing the ball around is chirped out by head coach Nick Walton. There's Sentner, he's got some space to work with. Now picked up by Styles right on the block. He walked too many steps. And that's strength defensively for Styles Fitz to cause that turnover. He might not look at sometimes, Alex, but and especially on the, the video camera, but if you're down there standing next to Styles Phipps, he definitely has some muscles and he puts them to good use. Kenny White. Have Styles Phipps playing off the ball at the moment. White's been bringing up the ball consistently. 
As Phipps gets his screen back to wide in the corner. Three, that one's good. Back-to-back -back possessions. Good looks for Kenny. And it's back to a 23-point lead. Staff trying to get it low. Entry denied originally by Kenny. Back out to Janicek. He's hit a couple of threes into the lane. That one's blocked by Maciel. Fight for the rebound, and that is going to be St. Mary's basketball. That's just plain old good defense by Anthony Maciel. Keeping his hands straight up, using his length to deflect the ball, not using his body. Jerome Key down there fighting amongst a couple. Styles, good dish, good cut by Lewis. He can't hit the backboard, so it goes wayward. Now the Eagles push. Long three for Janicek, and there's a reason he was open from that four. I think the Knights will be content with that type of jump shot for the rest of the game, Alex. I know he's hit a couple, but man, that was deep. That's Styles Phipps range. And he brings up the ball. He's going to step into one straight away. Three for three. Three times in a row down the floor. Three threes for number three. And they've extended that out to a 26-point lead. Well, and there are a couple of guys on this St. Mary's Knights team that when they get hot, they're hot. And Kenny White is definitely one of them. And if you're Flagstaff, you just cannot let him get any sort of space, especially when he's hit two. You're just going to let him walk into one. It's not a, uh, a recipe for success here, Alex, especially after the Eagles won that second quarter. And, and they're on their way to winning this third quarter, too. What was the difference, though, maybe the first 15 possessions, maybe 10 possessions of this quarter and those last three? Because nine of their 11 points have come in their last three possessions. Well, one thing I've noticed about this Knights team is sometimes there seems to be a direction to the offense, and sometimes there doesn't. You know what I mean? Styles Phipps. Yes, he can go one-on-one -on -one with anyone, but sometimes he's going one-on-one -on -one with a purpose, whether that be to draw guys in and kick, and that's what he's been doing with, with Kenny White. Probably one of his teammates that he trusts the most, I'd say, at least from shooting the three. And, man, when he's hot, you just got to feed, feed the hot hand, and Styles Phipps has done a tremendous job of doing that in this third quarter. Timeout allows St. Mary's get to, to get back into that full-court pressure. And that pass goes out of bounds, so that pressure causes a turnover. What was once a 15-point game and kind of getting a little dicey there at the beginning of this quarter. Knights have a chance to get it to even 29 with a three. Still looking to get uh, Sadu Tambora involved, though. They get the entry pass there. Passes to Maciel. Back out to Kenny. Do we have four straight? We do. That's unreal. 12 straight for Kenny White. Back into that pressure. Eagles open on the back end. Save right to the hands of Tambora. Up to Kenny White. Five in a row for three. We got it right wow. on home. 15 straight points for Kenny White. The fourth time out of the game called by Flagstaff. That's got to be at least, what, eight threes for Kenny in this game alone. Yeah, take this game out the <laughs> oven because this this one is cooked, Alex. Kenny White just burning up in here. <laughs> Who texted you that one? Come, on. <laughs> Come up with that off the fly. Yeah, all right, I'll give you credit for that one, I guess. But Just a tremendous, again, flipping the sw switch for St. Mary's. It's crazy how fast it can, it yeah, can turn. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, and when a guy like Styles Phipps isn't doing the damage, it's it's just amazing and a credit to the St. Mary's Knights team that someone else, you know, anyone else on the team, like we've we've been saying at the beginning of this season, someone else has to step up, and Kenny White has, has really stepped it up today. And again, the, the refs have stayed out of this game. Thankfully, yeah. you know, we are very thankful for that. One foul on each team in this quarter. 68-36, Knights back in pressure, another turnover, back to Kenny White. Off the backboard, I think he meant that one to be a lob. And Sadu will get a rebound and a put back, and that'll end the streak of Kenny White. Perfect shooting as there's a traveling violation on Connor O'Brien Pubini. Sadu would have brought the house down with oh. that one. Dude was sitting underneath the basket. 
He's only have, duck. He only has four points in this game, two yeah. in each half. Do we have six? He's not going to slam that one home, just kind of puts it off the backboard. That's Maciel going to get a steal. He flips that one, somehow saves it. Kenny White looking for a lob for Styles. Had to retime the jump. He comes down, collects, and finishes. This Remember one's last getting out year. of hand quickly. It's almost a 40 point game. How about that? And do we have 40? Styles. No good, gets fouled. And will head to the line. Fouled by Sentner, probably a good one from the Eagles' perspective. Well, if you remember last year, Alex, if, you're, if anyone is watching this game thinking, can Styles Phipps finish uh, an alley oop? We saw it last year, Alex. So when we were doubters and we saw the light, <laughs> he can do it. I think he might get a dunk this game. First free throw is good. Should be 75-36. The scoreboard in house is kind of going a little wayward. Should be 76-36. It says 78-36. Eagles bring it up the floor. A little fadeaway jumper. That's good for Janicek. Styles Phipps will bring it up the floor. Well, if they want so to, they're going to give St. Mary's <laughs> two more on the board. And the quest for 100, Styles Phipps in the lane, definitely fouled there, else that would have been a pretty finish. And there's still a minute 37 left, and Knight's almost to 80 points. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what exactly this bench squad can do in the fourth quarter, Alex, because I don't know if you remember in a couple games last year, it was... Similar, yeah. Similar to this, the student sections really wanted that 100, and then it got the running clock, opened up a little bit, and makes it harder. Just short, yeah. That's good. Well, if Aaron Estrada gets in the game and he plays any way he did in the JV game, he's going to be able to put up some points. He was playing very physical in the post. As that ball is entered into the post against one of the guys he was playing against in that JV game, Luke Hughes. 80 to 38. The score was once a 15 point game this quarter. Back iron, no good. I don't think the Eagles have scored since then. And just the two a couple of moments ago. Styles Phipps with a minute 15. Tambor, do we see the dunk? Here he does! Lightly, but still over the top of Jake Sentner, 82-38. You gotta know who you're jumping with, Alex. Definitely don't want to get caught underneath a Sadu Tambor poster. And a set, corner three, back iron, no. Maciel tips it around, Styles Phipps, he's got a wide open lane, a little two on one action. And Kenny White will lay it in. I think Styles was getting ready for takeoff there. <laughs> Coach Lopez even look at looking a couple of his assistants like go. Oh, I guess we got to write that game plan up. EJ Lewis or I should say Kenny White down there looking for a steal. 29 seconds on the shot clock. Sentner and one foul on Zedu Tambora. He wanted that one bad. Going right back at Zedu Tambora there, Alex. That's his response. Jinx Sender, he's been a good player, though. Probably the best on the floor, in my opinion, for, for Flagstaff. Sure. You can see why he averages 20 a game. Smooth player. 43-point game, once a 15-point game in this very quarter. A.J. Lewis, left wing. Good back cut. Good finish for Sadio. Now they're getting him involved. I'd like to see him maybe be a little more aggressive and more physical, but he's getting his points. Three seconds, tipped around. P.J. Lewis had more time to collect, and he'll head to the bench. Well, 14 points away from triple digits, Chris. That was uh, really a tale of two quarters. The last four minutes, they just couldn't miss. Yeah, and Kenny White in particular, man, did he put on a shooting performance in that third quarter. Five straight possession Five straight. with threes. Yeah, I mean, that's tough to do, no matter how good of a shooter you are. Starting to think about the next one, but it's just a credit of, to this St. Mary's team 
when they are playing at their best, and this is without Caspian Jones. He's uh, you know, sitting on the bench with a boot on, but without one of their top two or three best players, they can, they can still turn it up. Well, Chris, one of your favorite things in basketball, we've just seen it, a five-in, five-out sub for the St. Mary's Knights. John Ferendorf will check in. Of course, he's played earlier in this game. A.J. Mundumba the same, but we'll see Jonah Bellison and Don't Aaron Estrada for the first time. And then and Izzy Nunez will check back in as well. Izzy Nunez and Jonah Bellison matching shoes. I wonder if that one's planned. Dynamic duo of some sort. Of course, Jonah Bellison, at the end of that JV game, boy, did he really catch fire yeah. from three. I think he, hit, he might hit three in a row. And he let everybody know it, that's for sure. Knights will start on defense, leading by 45. Well, Brian Pubini with the basketball, guarded by Bellison. That's with their reserves. Looks like much of the starters for Flagstaff. And that'll be a foul. I believe they're going to get either Izzy Nunez or Aaron Estrada there. And that'll go on Izzy. Can we credit Izzy with a block there, an official block? I believe he got a piece of the ball. No. <laughs> Fortunately, the foul will negate that. He's got at least three or four rebounds, though. That's that'll true. Rattle in and out. Now he played well in his couple-minute stretch in that first half, that's for sure. Now he's just got to get it, get uh, see the ball through the hoop. Ellison. Comes up the right wing after two missed free throws. Dribble handoff, nope, he's gonna shoot the three in the corner. Back iron, no, there's another board. I think that's number five for Izzy. They're gonna get a screen up top. One Dumbo looking for Izzy up top. On ball, kicks Spellison, corner three, no good. Tipped around and Eagles basketball. Sentner, he'll push. 6.48 to go in this fourth quarter. O'Brien Pubini for three, that'll splash home. There was a game similar to this one last year, Alex, at Tempe. Yeah. Where the bench played well. almost the entire fourth quarter. Arendorf for three to try to answer back, that's short. Moral of the story, you gotta play till the final whistle. And that got within 20 points as Ferendorf tries to take a charge. It'll be called a block. And that clock will tick, tick, tick. Fourth foul of the Knights this half. Center at the line again. Well, St. Mary's next time out, they'll be right here at Bull Gymnasium against Perry, another tough game that we mentioned earlier and spoke about earlier. Fortunately, again, no Cash Jones in that one for the Knights. Ferendorf has it tipped out of his hands. Long pass it was read well by Sentner. We'll have a new voice. That way Dominic you folks Stern, at home yeah. don't have to listen to Alex Coyle anymore. <laughs> Celebrations all around the country for that one. Ellison into the lane, back out. Nunez looked at it for a half second and said Estrada straight away, short. Ferendorf fights for the board, it's one. Ian Eagle. Kenesek, corner three, why not, short. Ellison, can he push? Tips that one into a scrum, found by Wundumba. Back to him from Bellison, a three, it rattles home. 89-44. Ellison on ball, called for a foul, guarding Connor O'Brien Pubini. Ellison didn't agree with the call. Playing strong defense, still with 440 to go, up 45. Still want to show some good sportsmanship, though. Sedner gets it in. That's almost a backcourt violation. Looks like he stepped on the line, but a big screen, Bellison. Looked like he took a shoulder up top. He's holding his right ear. Wanted to call there, but uh, man that sat that, Luke Hughes. He played a little JV action. Now he's fighting to get the ball in from Estrada. Sentner for three. 
That's a good play on the inbound. He made it look good. He's a 33% three-point shooter on the year. Hits one there. Under four to go, halfway through quarter number four. Knights 11 points away from 100. Mundumba into Estrada. This is where he made his bread and butter in that JV game. Said he gets it knocked out of his hands. Al Sentner, open look for three again. He buries that one. Tell you what, he's been very, very solid today. And timeout is called as we're going to get some substitutions in. That'll be Zachary Bia and Leo Gishi. First time checking in for each of those guys tonight. And another substitution for the Knights. I believe Maciel will check in for Ferrendorf. Undumba gets a screen from Estrada. He'll dribble. Back to Estrada. Sails out of bounds. If you're the St. Mary's 19, if you're Coach Lopez, you might think about you know, calling a play, trying to get them in rhythm. Something the that, to around. make it more cohesive as a unit. For sure, because without Styles Phipps or Kenny White to lead the offense per se, we're just kind of seeing some nonsensical ball movement. Bellison off the pick, lays it in. Easy two. It's a good read from Jonah. Another steal, almost kick. Believe it was by Fresh, no call. The game with the basketball floats one up. A foul on Bellison, at least his second. Nope, that's going to be Izzy Nunez, I believe his third. Clock's going to keep so ticking, Alex. Nunez, second, Correction is second, sixth on the Knights. You know, at one point, can't remember which game it was last season. Game similar. AJ Mondama comes in as a freshman and just completely <laughs> posterizes someone. I don't remember who was first. He tried to. He didn't make oh, the basket. He rimmed but he, out, he, didn't he? Yep. He absolutely yammed on someone. It would have been the 100th wow. point of the game, I believe. Yeah, I think you might be right. And we're going to have to bring that up every single game for the rest of his career. Because do you remember? Well, he's got the basketball here. Look out. Clear the runway. He didn't, and he couldn't fly. Do you remember once it rimmed out, once he missed it, Alex, he was on the floor like he just lost the national championship. Trap in the corner. Strong dribbling through. Minute 30 to go. Pass goes wayward, and shot clock has been turned off for some reason. Plenty of rebounds for the Eagles. Strong finish there by Luke Hughes, the starter. Minute 19 to go. Knights up by 38. Bellison, clear lane. Dish to Maciel. Probably should have gone up with the layup there. Still scrumming for it, though. Maciel kicks it out. Nunez for three. Short. Almost had it, Chris. Minute to go. He got some serious arc on that ball. Doing the splits there is Hughes. Mundumba. There's that slam. Been waiting for that one all season. AJ Mundumba's got some serious, serious hops. That's deflected a foul on Maciel. That'll Come stop on. the clock with 41.1. Crowd getting ready to exit pool gymnasium. Another night's win. They'll improve to six and nine on the season. Blackstaff will fall to two and twelve. Still an admirable effort, though, from the yeah, Eagles. Yeah, definitely, especially that second quarter. Yeah, and, and the first half of the third as well. If you're head coach Nick Walton, I mean, I come away from this game liking what my team has done uh, you know during a couple parts of bits and pieces pieces of this game obviously not a full cohesive full quarters but maybe a quarter and a quarter and a half of a very good basketball Maciel up top 30 seconds to play Strata wide open he's fouled is not wanting to give away any easy points is Zachary Bia a junior That's one of those back pick plays that the St. Mary's team is known to run at times. Last year they ran it plenty of times to get Bear Cherry open, Sedu Tambora. 
Vune DeCore when he was healthy. First free throw is good. Uh, but again, coming away from a couple of those tournaments where you struggled, went one and three in each of them. So that's good, albeit again against very tough competition. But come back, have a confidence builder here before you play Perry and get into that rest of the region schedule. Two matchups with Mesquite down the line. Yes, that one's no good. The Knights try to get it up the floor, but it's back to an eagle. Little floater, that one's not even close, but hey, give it to him for playing hard. Second effort, Luke Hughes puts it through. Five seconds to go, 95-56. Bellison looks like he's gonna dribble out the clock. He does, and the Knights get their sixth win of the year. Yeah, like you were saying, Al, it's just an overall nice win. Confidence booster for the St. Mary's Knights team, and I know you mentioned it before, but the number 12 overall team in the nation comes to Boole Gymnasium this Saturday. If you can make it out to the game, please come to Boole Gymnasium because you know how we like these big games to be played here. But if you can't, myself, Chris Farendorf, and Dominic Stern will be filling in for Alex Coyle and we'll bring you that game. Yeah, I will say, if you do get a chance, come out because you haven't had that raucous atmosphere in Bull Gymnasium yeah. this season and really in quite some time uh, in a regular season game at least. Of course, the tournament games were, were terrific. And there's going to be some big games coming up, including Mesquite coming back to the scene of the crime from last year yeah. in, in a couple of weeks. But uh, wrapping up this game, though, just a great performance all around. Styles Phipps started the game in the first half. In the second half, it was that run. Five straight possessions with threes for Kenny White. And that, you know changed a 15-point game into a blowout. And for the most part, Styles Phipps was really picking and choosing yeah. his shots. You know, I really didn't feel like he was taking anything unnecessary. He wasn't jacking anything up, you know, and like we've seen him, he's kind of been forced to play that way versus top-notch competition just because he's the main player on St. Mary's who can create for himself in that sense. But versus a Flagstaff team that came in, obviously not the best record, Styles really pick and chose his battles and in the first half I think he scored near 30 points and in the second half he really focused his game on finding the open shooter and that clearly worked. Terrific shooting all around for the St. Mary's Knights quite a few threes got to give a shout out to the effort of the Flagstaff e Eagles coming down from Flagstaff for this game but uh, we thank you for joining us and again seven o'clock on Saturday uh, Perry going to come in to Bull Gymnasium, a tremendous game. If you can make it out, come out. If not, it'll be right here on We Are SM Hoops YouTube Live. Chris Farendorf will be there. Dominic Stern will be filling in for myself. Uh, until then, see you next time on We Are SM Hoops YouTube Live. Thanks for listening.